The St Andrews Lynx Trophy has continued to grow in stature since it was first held in 1989 and once again welcomes some of the best male amateur golfers to compete over the new course and the old course with the top 40 players plus ties making the cut for the final two rounds on Sunday. And a few of the golfers in the field might be able to draw on a different kind of experience on the most famous course of them all after taking part in last year's Walker Cup here at St Andrews. You know, coming from America, it's nice to be back playing Lynx Golf again and uh, obviously played the Walker Cup here, uh, some great memories and uh, again last year in this uh, tournament I did well, so a lot of good memories here. The wind direction is going to be completely different, um, so I'll tailor a few tee shots here and there, but just try and keep it in play. Um, the rough looks a little bit thicker, so um, being on the fairway will be key and uh, missing it in the right spots as well, because I know it can run away from me here. Last time I was here was the Walker Cup, um, so yeah, it just brings back great memories and it's nice to see some of the lads that played as well and some of it is a bit of a blur to be honest because uh, it was it was such a great experience obviously not the warmest weather so just try and keep it pretty much as warm as possible and yeah I mean it's windy as well so god be smart and yeah and once again the tournament will form part of a mini order of merit providing a path to earn a spot in the open championship at Royal Turin in July just given us an opportunity to obviously play play the Open which is amazing and yeah it's just a great opportunity to play such a big major. I like the fact that it's rewarded off consistency over the three events and I think uh, the best player will win that so I think it's a great thing. So who was coping best on a blustery day one on the new course? Reigning Scottish amateur champion Cameron Adam was going well. An excellent birdie here at 15 would help him be one of only 14 golfers to finish the day under par as he shot a one under par 70. James Ashfield from Wales was another Walker Cup player taking part and taking the conditions in his stride as he would finish at two under par tied second alongside Max Kennedy and Louis Misavu. But out in front with a brilliant five under par 66 was Seb Cave from Coxmoor. This fantastic bunker shot would help him to his seventh birdie of the day and a three shot lead after day one. On to day two and the weather was even colder and windier although enjoying a slightly calmer start to the day was the first group on the old course. Andrew Davidson was holding out well on his way to a one under par 71 to finish at minus two at the halfway stage. Matching that 36 hole total with a 70 in his second round was Paul Bovey. This approach at 17 would lead to a birdie and not for the first time the Frenchman would be in contention for a win in this tournament. The third player in the group was Josh Hill. He would have to settle for a par at the road hole but a brilliant 68 on day two would also put him at two under after 36 holes. James Ashfield had kept things going and a nice birdie here at the last would put him at four under in third place going into the final day's play. The cold wind could of course help the players at some holes, like here at the 348 yard par 4 12th. This was our leader Seb Cave's tee shot onto the green where he would get his third birdie of the day. This well hold putt though was to save par at the next hole as he kept up his good form from day one. More good play meant that he had this birdie putt at the last for a 4 under 68, but it wasn't to be. However, that 69 would mean that he had a two shot lead going into Sunday where we caught up with him before teeing off. Played this tournament twice, never made the cut here, so kind of, um, yeah, it's nice to be where I am now, but yeah, I like it here and it's good. So. It's just been 
trying to keep warm in the, the win really. Um, played nicely, obviously two good scores. Um, but yeah, halfway done, so just yeah, had some good rest last night and just got ready for today really and yeah, keep the ball low in this, this windy weather, so yeah, all good. Seb would be playing alongside Simon Hovdal from Sweden after his brilliant 66 on Saturday. However, he would struggle on Sunday morning, finding himself 8 over par after 11 holes in his morning round, although he improved his score with four birdies along the home stretch. The front nine was proving tough for many of the golfers. James Ashfield was 2 over par before converting this approach at 7 for his first birdie of the day as he tried to stay in contention. Even the leader Seb Cave was struggling a little, missing the green here at six, leading to his third bogey of the day. But he would finally get going at the seventh with his first birdie after holing out from 25 feet. Also holing out well and moving up the leaderboard was Callum Scott. A great par putt here at 10 after a wayward tee shot. And by the time he holed this birdie putt at the last, he was only two shots off the lead. Alongside him was another Scot, Cameron Adam. Helped by the wind, we can see him driving through the green on 18, where he would get his birdie to match Callum Scott's 54-hole total of three under par. One shot back was Paul Bovey, who would also get a birdie in front of the crowd on 18 after this nice touch with the putter for his second shot. Leader Seb Cave would also run through the 18th green with his tee shot, but an excellent chip from an awkward lie would help him to get his birdie and take a two shot lead into the final round after another tough 18 holes for the players on Sunday morning. As the sun tried to come out for the golfers, could anyone catch the leader who had been out in front since the first round? Callum Scott briefly got alongside him as this birdie at seven was one of three on the front nine of his final round. But he would give away too many shots on the back nine and eventually finish tied second on four under par. The real story of the afternoon was a brilliant fighting comeback from Simon Hovdell. This birdie at six would move him to two under for the tournament and back to only three shots off the lead. Also trying to make his way to the top of the leaderboard was England's Harley Smith. His birdie here at seven would also move him to two under par. He kept up his good form as the round progressed and he would finish tied second alongside Callum Scott at four under. But in the final group, Simon Hovdell's remarkable round had continued. A good tee shot at the tough par 3 11th for the Swede who was now 4 under for the tournament. And not only would he get his birdie here, he would birdie the 12th to move to 6 under par alongside longtime leader Seb Cave. But as all golf fans know, it's all about how you handle the finishing holes of any tournament. But especially here on the old course and when it starts pouring with rain. Hovdell had gone back to 5 under par while Seb Cave was now at 7 under. But it was Hovdell who would get his par at 17 after this nice long putt for his third shot while Cave would have to settle for a bogey. However, almost unbelievably, Simon Hovdell would put his drive at 18 out of bounds to the left, meaning that Seb Cave would just need to keep his composure to get the win. A nice approach over the flag into the middle of the green was just exactly what was required. A costly six at the last for Simon Hovdell to finish in fourth spot. 
but what a fight he had put up in a thrilling final round. But with a par at the last, our winner by two shots for a really impressive wire-to-wire -wire victory was Seb Cave from Coxmoor in England. What a long day. Um, 36 round, any golf course is long, but round here and the wind and the, the rain at the end is, yeah, it's, it's something special. But to win here in front of family, friends and, and girlfriend is just great. So yeah, I feel over the moon really. I've never, I've just never seemed to crack it round here, and, and and came this week with a good mindset, and uh, I genuinely believe having the girlfriend on the bags helped massively, and just I just stayed chill. I didn't know where I was coming down the stretch, and just tried to play golf, and and yeah, I just loved every minute of it really. Congratulations once again to Seb Cave, our St Andrews Lynx Trophy champion for 2024.